Hey everyone, Don here, Paleo Track Survival. Um, right now it's springtime in the Rocky Mountains and I'm out doing my uh, springtime scout for mule deer and elk. I do this every year, uh, you know, hunting season's not for a couple uh, months away, but it's one of those things that uh, I like to get out, kind of get my finger on the pulse where the animals are moving around, what they're eating, uh, kind of seeing exactly what they're doing. I've already seen some signs of mule deer not too far from here. I walked up this nice hill behind me, I saw a nice little rock, figured I'd take a break and then uh, kind of give a quick uh, layout on uh, exactly what I bring with me when I go out and I do a, um, uh, any sort of scouting for, for hunting. Um, keeping in, you know, in faith with uh, how I live and what I do, I have only a uh, primitive pack, a primitive scouting kit, whatever you would like to call it, but uh, I don't have a lot of resources, but pretty much everything's wrapped up in one buckskin and that's all I've got. I've used this for the past couple nights, um, it really gives me and affords me what I need to uh, to make it out in the uh, the cold nights. Um, so uh, stick around. I'm going to go over some of the specifics that's on the inside. Right. So first and foremost, yeah, cool. uh, anytime I go out scouting, I always have a couple uh, different resources on me. Um, one thing that I always have on me is a, a primitive stone sling. Um, and what I do is I just carry it in my pocket with a couple rocks. Or you can throw these in a pouch, back pocket, whatever the case may be. And the stone sling is, you know, it's handmade. I made this. This is just um, jute cord, uh, you know, woven together with a leather wrap around it and a couple um, river stones. So it works well. It's an effective tool. I can use it um, as needed if I see some sort of game or something like that. It just affords me an opportunity to, to get some fresh meat. So um, I always have this with me. <coughs> it's not too hard. Along with that, on the outside of the pack, as you can see here, um, I carry a rabbit stick. This is a uh, handmade rabbit stick. It's out of uh, scrub oak. Scrub oak has that nice little uh, natural twist to it and it affords me the opportunity to kind of take advantage of the uh, natural shape of it. Um, yep, so build on one side, flat on another. This is pretty good. Call them non-returning boomerangs, whatever the case may be, but uh, this is a great another little tool just to have on your, on your pack for the most part. Uh, and as something presents itself, you can take advantage of it. Now the pack itself is just uh, it's just a buckskin. This is uh, one of the bucks that I've, I, I took a couple years ago, um, and now I just wrap everything up on it. And the outside is uh, held together by just some snake woven um, leather, uh, just kind of worked down. And then there's an actual strap that you can use to modify in about a thousand different ways to whatever's uh, most comfortable for you. So what I'll do is I'll uh, take a second and I'll get inside. All right, going into the pack, simple knot up in the front. Now, on the, uh, when everything is kind of set and done, I'll show you how I pack it up and how I exactly get this configuration. It's pretty easy. It's not rocket science by any means, but um, you know, it helps if you get a visual. This is that carrying strap. This is the uh, outer strap, the containment strap. It's here, and then basically it's just one buckskin wrapped together as such. Uh, so what I have here is some of my basic components. Um, I'll kind of go through it. One right off the bat, I got a little, uh, little boat bag, a little water bag. Um, in the Rockies, snow's melting. You can probably see it behind me. There's plenty of water running here and there. Um, the past couple nights, I've, I've just uh, collected some water out of some of the local streams. Didn't really need to purify it. Been doing it for years, no issue. So water bag's a must. <coughs> With that, I always have a chow bag. Uh, this is just uh, goat skin. Um, tan goat skin that I've done uh, and Inside is what I like to call <laughs> It's kind of my own personal concoction um, I call it a little B&B &B. Basically, it's a uh, it's beef. It's nuts and it's bird uh, There's jerk meat in there. That's the beef and the bird and then there's broken up smashed up nuts um, That is <clears throat> essentially, you know walnuts almonds and a variety of other nuts. It's got some good fats salts proteins It's got a little concoction of everything uh, what I like to do is just kind of throw it in a stew or just eat it by the handful. It's kind of a good little power boost. I kind of like call it the, uh, the Paleolithic, uh, you know, power bar for the most part. So always have a big bundle of this, and this is what I eat routinely uh, when I'm out. <coughs> That's a couple uh, other pieces of goat skin. I use these as wraps uh, during the night, or if I need to lay something down on the ground along with this giant buckskin here, I can do that. Just some extra protection. <coughs> some extra uh, tan leathers if you will um, with that I always have a couple different options as far as 
uh, some leather uh, wraps here and then some jute wraps. I like to use the jute a little bit more just because I can get individual fibers if I need to make some snares, fishing, or do some sewing. But these also make uh, great tinder for uh, extending a coal or something along those lines. So great little options here. I can use them for lashing as well. Um, this is kind of the, uh, kind of like the little toolkit, if you will. On the inside of this is just uh, one pitch stick that uh, I have and carry with me. Standard pitch stick, nothing crazy about it. Um, I have a small little wrap of uh, deer sinew. I just keep deer sinew kind of refined down to about uh, 85%. I like to kind of keep it a little, a little thick and chunky. Just lets it stay together a little bit nicer until I absolutely need it. Um, so I got some deer sinew in there. Um, I got a little fish kit. Basically, this is just a piece of wood, some sinew wrapped around it, and a little gouge hook on the end. You can kind of see that. Cover it with bait. Fish comes up, swallows it, gouges himself, and then you pull him in. It's worked exceptionally well, especially right now when all the uh, uh, ice is melting off the tops of the lakes and some of these, you know, bigger streams. There's some hungry trout in there, and they don't uh, they don't mind eating pretty much anything. Um, I also have a couple uh, bone uh, spear points. Um, you know, arrow points, whatever you want to use, Matt, it's just another option. Uh, just a little thing. I don't weigh much. Just throw them in this little kit. Not too bad. That as well. I also have uh, one dacite arrow point. It's just kind of refined down. It's just a simple thing. I can haft it onto a uh, to an arrow, or I can use it as a small little cutting tool. This is a little uh, finger and little uh, little hand drill. Basically, uh, you hold it between your fingers, put it up against your wood where you want to make your hole, and just start working it through. Along with that, you can also um, take a uh, long shaft, half it onto there as well, tie it off with some sinew, and you kind of have a, a hand drill with an actual drill bit on the end of it. This is just a uh, nap material um, that I've uh, napped down not too long ago. Uh, another thing I always carry with me is typically a large blade of some sort. It's always stone, never, never <laughs> steels or anything along like those. Um, this is a uh, obsidian blade. I napped this not too long ago. Um, it's just something I carry with me. I had a couple different ones. They've, you know, they've broken down and you know, they get banged around every once in a while. But this is a newer one. This can be worked uh, just as a regular uh, knife, a hand knife. You could wrap some leathers around it. Or if I had to, I could actually tap it onto a spear and have a large thrusting spear. And this is like you throw it on an addle addle or anything along those lines. This is pretty heavy. It's robust. It's not going to move very far. But it's a big stone blade. Gives me a little personal protection, as well as a great cutting tool. Um, inside, another goat skin. I find goat skin relatively easy to work. Is um, kind of my on-the-go flint napping kit. I always carry some sort of flint napping kit with me. It usually consists full of uh, leather pads, a couple different pressure flakers and percussion devices. These are antler tines. And then, uh, you know, for the most part, just unrefined if you will, uh, blade. So in here I have, along with these antler tines, I have three uh, dacite blades. I took these off a large spall. Um, these can be used as, as a razor sharp. Um, I can use these for a variety of things. I can actually you know, use it as a draw knife. I can gut skin animals with it. Uh, I can do fine work if I gotta make holes, uh, working in fireboards. These are kind of like the, the multi-tool um, out in the world for the most part. And once these edges get dulled up, that's where I can use these pr pressure flakers with my leather pads to actually turn them into maybe uh, maybe a larger arrow point like this, a larger spear point, throw something on an atlatl as well. So uh, I don't leave home without these. Don't leave home without these. I don't leave home without these. Also, um, here's another, uh, just a little flint point. This would actually be for a, um, you know, an atlatl dart or something along those lines. It's a little bit uh, smaller, clearly, than the obsidian blade, but this is more of a, a working um, dart point, if you will. This is think of this as more of a knife. Uh, with that as well, you can also reverse this edge, wrap it with uh, leather or some sort of stick, and you can actually have a small little kind of like adds. When using as a hand adds with this point on there, but I could take that point off and and use it to do some woodwork if possible or if needed. Uh, with that as well, last I have my um, my fire kit. Nothing crazy. Standard friction fire bow drill set. Um, one thing I don't do is I typically don't carry a uh, bow drill with me, um, the bow that is, because it's just 
it's not really necessary. One reason why is uh, I have a <coughs> rabbit stick that's in that perfect shape. It's playing long enough that I can use if needed. But uh, for the most part, it's your standard kit. Um, fireboard, spindle, this is my coal catch. This is my bearing block. This is moose. This is made out of cotton wood. Um, this is a relatively new set. I've just used it for the past two nights, as you can see. Um, works well. It's a dry set. I always have something. I don't like to use uh, leaves. I, clearly you can, but I like to have something with a little bit more uh, stiffness to us when transferring coals. Uh, this moose antler works great as a bearing block. It's almost formed perfectly for my hand. It's been used several times. Um, I've had this for a good chunk of change now. Um, but yeah, but this is, this is pretty much it. This is um, what I will use, what I will bring. And this is all I really need to sustain for a couple nights uh, way up in the Rocky Mountains. Um, you know, when it's snow, the temperature still drops. This buckskin and with a properly built shelter um, and even these goat skins, that's, that's really enough to keep me warm. This is all I really have out here. Um, <laughs> a pair of shorts, t-shirts, and uh, some, some sandals. But uh, building a right shelter with the right fire and having a little bit of layers on you, um, you can definitely last uh, for as long as needed. But um, this is it in a nutshell. This is my uh, primitive uh, scouting uh, kit for the most part. This is what I've always carried with me and I will continue to carry with me. Clearly, as times change and things go on, I always replace things. Leather straps get worn out. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the hides get a little stinky or they get a little uh, you know, saturated. With so pretty much I just unpacked everything. This is kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, what I'm gonna do real quick is uh, I'll show you how I pack it up, how I uh, latch everything back together and uh, kind of go from there. All right, so. All right, so I've kind of consolidated and uh, condensed everything down, um, how I'd exactly pack it out. Um, relatively simple, I just lay out my uh, buckskin lengthwise, just like this, hold over those edges, nice little tight wrap here, and then kind of make these lateral ends somewhat the same. Roll it over once, flatten it out, and then I continue rolling just as is. And it kind of rolls up into a nice, neat little bundle. Now, how I actually secure it has to be relatively simple. So I take both the, uh, the ends of the rope or whatever it is that you're using, I take that bite, I run it through, right underneath. Lose everything. Let's go this way. Just like this. And I take those two working ends and I work them through. And I pull it nice and tight. Just like this, right? So now that I have this, I've got it cinched right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make sure it's even flat, flare out these edges a little bit. I got to, I control the tension. All right, so I get this. And then once I'm here, I come laterally. So I have both my working ends through this loop, and then I come laterally right to the front. Throw it right up underneath, like this. Right up underneath. Now, secure it, square it out right in the front. Now, from that point, take whatever my shoulder strap's gonna be. And how I secure this is right where this little configuration is right back here. Let's take one end, push it down and through. Take my next end, down and through. Just like such. Secure this on both sides. Kind of knowing what your length is helps. Not. And then you can wear it ooh, how many ways you so choose. Now, once you throw it over your shoulder, yeah, you might have to adjust it, tighten it out, whatever you need to do. Next thing you do is take your rabbit stick, insert it through, and how you want to, you know, hook your rabbit stick up is so if you have to employ it in any sort of situation, it's already flat side, palm side down. You can pull it out, use it, shoulder it throw it out. So uh, that's kind of it. 
I find that this uh, this kit works exceptionally well. Uh, last night it dropped down into about I would say about the 20, 25, 30 degrees. It was, it was pretty cold, but a, a good little fire, good shelter, and some good skins really helped out. Um, so hopefully this all made sense. I'm sure it did. It's not rocket science by any means. But remember, this is a way, not the way. This is the way that I do it. How you do it is entirely up to you. Maybe you can uh, pull a couple different concepts or ideas out from this, make them your own. But this is a way, not the way, but it's my way. So hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the future.